So today I got a bunch of cool parts I can't wait to show you and everything that we have is gonna help this truck, the ugly truck, achieve its goal, or I guess rather my goal, of running an eight second pass down the quarter mile drag strip. Now, I do realize that an eight second pass is an extremely, extremely ambitious goal. I mean, especially if you consider the fastest this truck has been to date is like an 1108, something like that down the quarter mile. Um, Although, side note, I am planning on going back to the track for the very last test and tune of the year. I think I'm gonna have a different converter in by then and we hopefully can get the truck into the tents. But that's on the stock motor and of course, over the winter we'll be finishing up our 1500 horsepower big block build and hopefully that will be enough to propel this truck into the eights. Of course, we're also gonna be doing a four wheel drive conversion over the winter, um, probably rebuilding the turbo kit, doing a whole bunch of changes to this truck. And on top of that, I also need to find the time to do a 5.4 dual overhead cam swap in my new Mustang project slash daily fun, cool side project. So I definitely have my hands full this winter, but we need some parts to make that happen. So let me show you what we got. So first of all, huge thanks to the folks over at Holly because they've basically provided the ugly truck with a completely new engine management system, like top to bottom, front to back. This new big block that we're putting together is gonna to be running on one of the coolest and one of the best EFI setups that I have seen in a long time. Now, so far the stock computer has done an okay job of getting us where we've wanted to go, but there are a few major shortcomings that basically put the engine at risk. Now, here's a perfect example. Let's say I'm making a pass down the track. Let's say one of my fuel pumps goes out and we drop fuel pressure. Well, the stock computer has no idea what the fuel pressure even is, you know, much less if you have more or less of it than you should. So it's basically just gonna keep those injectors at whatever pulse width they're supposed to be. And the short-term fuel trims, well, they're not even active under power enrichment. So we drop fuel pressure, basically we're running lean and we can risk damaging the engine. That's just one example, but you know, the same thing is true for oil pressure. Um, there's no traction control on these trucks. There's no way for the stock computer to control boost. Basically, it's just gonna provide fueling and spark control and that's kind of it. And to be honest, um, we're fairly limited on spark control too, because if you've ever seen the timing table that I have in here, once we get to like three pounds of boost, we're running on the bottom row of the tuning. Yeah, we could scale and do a whole bunch of other stuff like that, but I've always known I want to switch the engine management stuff. And thanks to Holly, we now have everything that we need. So if you want to buy anything Holly related for your car or truck, definitely use the link below in the description. Um, they have been a huge support to this channel. So let's dive right in and let me show you what we got. So, we got like three different groups of stuff here on the front of the table. We have the electronics, we have the wiring in the middle, and then down there on the end, we have some sensors and stuff that basically will help the electronics gather all the information that they need so they can do their job properly. Um, first and foremost, we're talking about engine management. So of course we need a computer. Now, Holly has all kinds of different computers, but the one that I chose, the one that I went with is the Holly Dominator. And the reason why I went with this one, it is like the top of the line is because I wanted room to grow, I wanted to expand, and I wanted to have as much information on this computer as humanly possible. So first of all, there's a computer. It'll control the engine, it'll let it run. That's kind of its basic operation. But this bad boy will do all the safety stuff as well. And to be honest, it does a lot more than I'm even fully aware of right now. I got a big learning curve on this. Um, I've tuned GM stuff quite a bit, but when it comes to the Holly stuff, I am gonna be new at it. I am gonna be asking for help. I got a bunch of great people who have volunteered to help me learn the tuning on this side of things. But here it is, guys. This is the Dominator computer. It is big, it is rugged, it's got all kinds of capability. And like I said, the main thing that I'm after is safety. If we lose fuel pressure, if we lose oil pressure, let's say the mixture's running a little bit too lean, or maybe uh, we wanna control boost by how fast we're going, how far into the run. This computer will do all that stuff and then some. So like for example, we can eliminate a lot of the extra systems we've had to add on to the truck already, like the boost controller that will now be tied into the Holly. I'll show you that in a second. The little two-step box that I have on there, the MSD, it works great with the stock computer, but now we should be able to control that with the Dominator ECU. So. Full control over everything, lots of added safety, lots more information. It's just a better overall way to run our big block. Uh, let's talk about gauges real quick because if you guys 
No, you know that I don't really like gauges. Let me show you real quick on the, on the truck right now what we have. And I do this because I always like to keep an eye on things. We have a, let's see, I added in the cluster a transmission temp gauge down there, but we have a wide band, we have boost, uh, fuel pressure, and then boost. Um, but to be honest, like I really, really hate how this thing looks. So we're actually gonna be adding a bunch of gauges. Sorry, it's so dark, but we're gonna be adding a bunch of gauges right there in the radio. Let me show you how we're gonna do that. This is the Holly 6.86 Digital Dash. Comes with, of course, a little template so you can cut it out. I have a bracket I'll show you later on that'll actually make this mount right into the dashboard. Um, some foam, <laughs> you get some foam, of course. And then this guy right here. It's a lot more compact than the really big ones that they have, but this is the perfect size to go where the radio is. Uh, and this will tell us all of the information that we're recording. So I can get rid of my boost gauge, get rid of my wideband gauge, get rid of the fuel pressure gauge, and we can even put a lot more stuff on here. Like I am gonna be picking up exhaust back pressure. We're gonna be picking up uh, boost pressure. Oil pressure will now be on this, where right now the stock computer has no idea what the engine oil pressure is. Uh, transmission temp, I think we're gonna have that wired in here as well. Uh, we, speaking of wiring, we do have a lot of wiring to do, but I can eliminate that ugly gauge cluster thing that's up there and we'll have everything on this nice color touch screen. And I think this thing can even like play back data logs and do a whole bunch of other cool stuff like that. So that's what we're doing for gauges. See, I think I actually double ordered this one because I think in the digital dash, there's another one of these, but this is a GPS uh, antenna. That'll provide a speed signal into the digital dash. Of course, we also should have the speed signal coming from the transmission too, but uh, you can never have too much information. All right, next up we have these guys, some smart coils. These are, I think they call the big wire smart coil. Basically, we need more spark energy. Every time you fill a cylinder with pressurized gas, you know, the more pressure you put in there, the harder it is to ignite a spark. And these guys have a lot more energy than the stock coils. So we got eight of them. We got the big wire kit in there as well. So the brains of the system are clearly the electronics, specifically the Dominator ECU right here. Uh, I can't wait to get the dash in place. That'll clean up the inside of the truck a ton. But I think the next most important part, of course, is the sensor stuff that we have over here. Uh, I grabbed three of these guys. They're a 100 PSI uh, pressure transducer. Look like that. Uh, and we can put these in pretty much anything where I'm gonna be using them. Uh, we have one that's gonna be going in the fuel system so we can monitor fuel pressure. We have one that's gonna go probably down on the side of the engine for oil pressure. And the third one is actually gonna be plumbed into the exhaust before the turbo so we can measure exhaust back pressure. Cause that's one of the things I wanna keep an eye on. I wanna make sure that our, cause we are gonna be pushing the limits of this turbo before we switch the other one. Uh, I want to make sure that our back pressure is not significantly higher than the boost pressure. So um, one of these sensors is going to go in there, but we also have to have, because you can't just screw that right into your exhaust. And this exhaust back pressure kit that I also picked up, this is from Earl's, I think, a Holly company. So it has all the fittings that you need to weld it in and isolate, you know, the sensor from the exhaust with the long metal tube. We got some braided flex line there, a little clamp. So that'll keep the pressure sensor away from the exhaust. And then, um, so we covered that. Temperature, I do need to pick up one or two more of these, I think, because one is gonna be dedicated to the coolant temp, uh, but I'm also gonna be wiring in a trans temp gauge. I'm also going to be wiring in uh, engine oil temperature. So I need two more of those, I believe, but that's, you know, that's a pretty simple thing to get. And then, let's see. Oh, boost control, that's another thing we can eliminate. Right now, I've just got this manual boost controller, which works, but with the spring I have in here, I only have like about five or six PSI of adjustment where um, I'd like to have a much greater range, like say, you know, 10 PSI or more. And once again, the computer in here now, the stock computer has no idea. Well, that's why it does know what the boost pressure is because there's a map sensor in there. We get a three bar OS, but it cannot control it where the Holly ECU, the Dominator, absolutely can. So we picked up one of these dual solenoid 
uh, boost control kit. So I'll get that out right now. So, um, yeah, to be honest, I don't know how this thing works, but I just do know that it does work. So I can't wait to get that guy in. Have to get a few more uh, fittings and hoses to get that plumbed in. We also have an idle air control motor, throttle position sensor. We got a 90 millimeter throttle body on the way for our new intake. We've got a wide band. This is of course very important because if say the engine leans out, well, we wanna be able to cut power by pulling timing or pulling boost. And ooh, this is difficult to do with one hand. So you guys have all seen a wide band. We got a wide band. So that is pretty much the sensor package that we are running. So whenever you wire up a vehicle like this, you're kind of playing connect the dots, I guess. That's a good way to explain it. Uh, the ECU on one side, you have the sensors on the other, and the wiring is, of course, how you play connect the dots. Um, let's see, this, a lot to go through here. Injector harness, this one is important because, well, it controls the injector. So this one's terminated on each end. It has the right connector for the style of injector that I have. And depending on what you have, you can get these injector harnesses with the, I think the original truck style and the EV6, which is like what I have, uh, EV1 style, uh, pretty much any injector. They have a different harness for it and just plugs into the rest of the main harness, those guys there. So injectors. Next we have the input output harness. This guy is pretty simple. Just any extra wiring like boost control or maybe stuff that won't be part of the main engine harness. Just gotta go through this guy right here. So I think there are two, four, six, eight more pins through there. So, um, and I'm totally guessing off the top of my head, but I think the dominant ECU, it does like, I'll put the correct number on the screen, but I thought it was like 14 or 18 or some big number of inputs and outputs that you can run through. Again, one more reason why I chose the Dominator. This one I have not opened yet, but it's the transmission harness. So the Dominator will control a GM 4L60 or an 80, but you gotta have the wiring to do so. So it's got the input speed sensor, the output speed sensor, the main plug, some relays. Of course, plugs right into the ECU. Simple. But I think after I had placed the order for this, we might be going with a full manual valve body, so I may not need some of this. Main engine wiring harness, or power harness, rather. One thing that's very important when you're wiring up an ECU is to have good, clean power straight from the battery to the computer. That's what this is. All right, this is the important one, the main wiring harness. Um, actually, before I show you this, depending on what type of engine you have, like let's say you get an LS, for example, they make pre-terminated harnesses that'll fit pretty much everything that you have. Um, most of the wiring on the 8.1 is actually similar to an LS. Um, it has like, for example, in throttle wire, the same idle air control, the same throttle position. It has the same map sensor and the same injectors, but everything on an 8.1, sort of kind of is in a different spot. So instead of getting a pre-made LS harness that I would cut apart and move, I got an unterminated complete engine harness. Now, there's a lot of wires here, but this basically goes to everything engine related. It has the plugs already made that go into the ECU, but everything else on the other end, because it's not where it used to be on the LS, well, we get to do the wiring on it. We got a complete wiring harness ready to go. We're ready to put in the work. I'll be honest, I'm not looking forward to this, but you gotta have wiring, right? So in a nutshell, that is the new engine management system for the ugly truck. We've got a Dominator ECU, the 6.86 digital dash, We've got the smart coil, some GPS, whole bunch of wiring, enough to do the space shuttle probably, and a whole bunch of sensors as well, so we can keep an eye on things, or rather, so the Dominator can keep an eye on things, and that is gonna kinda like take the wheel and control everything in case something mechanically goes wrong. Because remember, one of the main reasons for doing this is to help protect our engine. Um, if you guys want to purchase anything Holly related, please just use the link in the description below. That absolutely will help the channel. Um, even if you want to just browse their site and see what parts could work for your car or truck. Um, they have pretty much everything, so go check them out. Holly has been a huge support, so thank you guys. I do appreciate it. Um, I wanted to go over a couple of dates with you guys just to kind of uh, going forward so we are on the same page about what to expect. Uh, the first date is December 
23rd. I think that's a Saturday down at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. It's the last test and tune of the year. Hopefully, if everything goes right, we'll have the ugly truck back down there with a different exhaust and a different torque converter. And we've already shaved about 90 pounds off of it. And the exhaust mods will shave probably another 100 pounds, I bet. Uh, anyway, we're going back to the track and hopefully we can run a tent. So December 3rd and then let's see. Oh, the next one, December 11th. That doesn't mean anything to you guys, but on that date, hopefully my rocker arms for the new big block build should be done and they should be shipped. And then we can continue on assembly of the Turbo 535. We've got the short block done. The cam is in, it's degreed. Um, you put the lifters in, put the heads on and all that good stuff. So rocker arms is like the major holdup. And then after that, once I get the rocker arms actually and I can measure for the push rods. And then finally, the date that I am shooting for to have the truck done with the big block in, the four wheel drive conversion done, roll cage in, like over the whole over the winter project, rear suspension, front suspension, coilovers, everything. Uh, they just announced it and I'm probably gonna get it wrong because this is from memory, but like April 20 something, uh, LS Fest down in Las Vegas once again. Um, don't tell anybody because this is technically not an LS, but um, hopefully this will be done by the time that event rolls around. I'm going to try to have the ugly truck at LS Fest. I probably can't compete, but because it's not an LS, but it'll be fun just to take it down there and do some exhibition. So that's the plan. Those are the dates. Now all I got to do is get to work. Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. If you want to learn more about the ugly truck and our quest for a 10 second pass, check out the last video because it was kind of exciting. We got extremely, extremely close. Thanks for watching.